Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. These are the new makeup releases for September. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. I do this video once a month on the channel where I go over some selected newly announced makeup to see if I'm interested in buying these or not. So let's just dive in because I've got 36 things to talk to you about. And it's September, so of course we're going to get Christmas releases being announced. We're going to get Halloween releases being announced. And there have been a couple of pretty exciting uh, palette releases as well, I think. So I'm um, not sure I'm going to be buying anything right off the bat. Like, I don't really know. But yeah, so far, I think there are some nice things that are being released this time around. So let's just get through it. So I mentioned Christmas. Every year for Christmas, Cold Beauty has a... Uh, advent calendar and you could already put yourself on the list starting the end of July for this because I filmed my August one a little earlier so I missed a couple of releases then so I'm just throwing them in here but yeah just know that you can sign up for this beauty advent calendar if you want to um, I think the Cull Beauty one is one of the best ones. I'm not a huge fan of advent calendars because I always get things I don't need and that I don't want so that's why, to me, they're not worth the money. But if you want to try a lot of beauty products, then maybe give it, a, give it a chance sometime. And this is the thing I think most people want to hear my thoughts about. This is the Urban Decay Naked Palette. So this was brought back. I don't think it was released everywhere. I think it was only available in the US at Ulta and the US Urban Decay website. It wasn't released worldwide. I'm not sure if they're going to. Um, I didn't hear anything about it. I think I did see someone like list like when it would come. Like I think I saw Beauty News listing when it would come to different territories. Um, and th this is as expensive as like naked palettes are now. I remember like at the time that this was re released originally, it wasn't that expensive. But now this retails for as much as a Natasha Denona palette. So that's quite a lot of money. Um, what do I think of this re-release? I, I think that this is a good call for Urban Decay because I think a lot of people lamented the discontinuation of the original palette. They did update the formula, so it's not 100% the same. And I've seen a couple of comparison videos where people have said that the shimmer formula is actually a little bit better, um, but the mattes seem to be a little bit like left behind. This palette was shimmer heavy though. There were only like three mattes, if I remember correctly. Everything else was at least a satin sort of shimmer. And I definitely think that where makeup stands right now with the focus being more so on blush and not eyeshadow, that this is actually a good release to do because it is supposed to be like washes of color. This is not gonna be like boom kapow in your face sort of eyeshadow. It was never intended to be, and I know that that was one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't like this anymore, because it didn't give them that, but I, then I feel like that's not fair, um, because the Urban Decay Naked palettes were never intended to be boom kapow in your face pigment. So from that perspective, I think it's a good move. I just don't think that this is something that really had to happen. Like if the Urban Decay Naked 2 would be re-released, re re I would be all over it. But from my personal collection, this doesn't make a lot of sense. The original Naked palette was never my favorite. I found it far too warm toned for my complexion and it was actually one of my least used Naked palettes. For a while, it was one of the only palettes I had. So yes, I was using it, but the kind of love that a lot of people were giving this palette where they hit pan, I was never committed to this palette to, to, that, like, to that extent. So that's why for me personally, I'm going to be passing up on this, even if it does become available here. Um, but yeah, the Urban Decay Naked palette, I think it's a good move from the brand in terms of where we are at right now. Um, and people love a bit of nostalgia. Blake Lively has a hair care line. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to go because ever since this was released, there's now been like a whole thing with that new movie. I didn't really follow it. I don't do celebrity culture. So I, I always like hear tidbits and then I always like zone out because I don't find it that important. But yeah, she's just launched a hair care brand. So curious to see how long that's going to last with all the controversy that's now surrounding her. We have a new contour stick from Dior. So these are the Forever 24 Skin 
contour stick, which again, makes a lot of sense. I think contouring blush, that's really what we're seeing a lot now. And that's really what a lot of people are using. I'm not a huge fan of contouring. I now have a new contour stick from Essence that was in their update. And that's enough contour for me for like the next year or so. I have quite a long face, so I always struggle doing contours because wherever I put it, like my forehead is super high. Um, my cheek is really long, so I never know where it's supposed to go and I always mess up and it always looks weird. So I already have a very narrow jaw, so I don't need to put a stripe there and make it look even, even longer and narrower than it already is. So for me, contour isn't really my thing. For Dior, this makes sense. I think like Dior can do good makeup. So I think there is going to be lots of people who like this. Sigma has come up, come out with a new skin tint, which is nice, but Sigma is quite hard for me to find. Um, Beauty Bay is really the only place where I can get it really easily. And to then have to buy a skin tint online. Mm -mm. And I think, yeah, it only comes in six shades. What's up with that? Six shades of skin tint. Yeah, that's gonna match a lot of people. I don't think so. So I'm gonna be passing up on this, but again, Sigma is a, is a really solid brand. They do nice things. Shantikai has released the Cheetah collection. There seem to be some like lipsticks and this like face palette kind of thing. Um, Shantikai is one of those brands that I feel has, oh, is it eyeshadow? It's eyeshadow. They're not face palettes. They're eyeshadow. Mm -hmm. I do like these lipsticks. I've never tried Shantikai. It's again, a brand that the only place I've ever seen it in store is like Space NK when I'm in London. Um, and that, you know, it's quite an expensive brand. So do I then like shell out this much money? So for me, no, but I definitely feel there is a market for products like this and a brand like this. Urban Decay has also announced a completely new eyeshadow palette. This is the City Space Cowboy Star Palette. It's shaped like a star. Um, it seems to have two mattes and like four shimmering shades. Um, and I think what it's trying to do is like take the popularity of something like Space Cowboy and like tie into that. Can this be pretty? I'm sure, yes, but I would just opt for the single. You don't need these shimmers. This palette has made its way to me. Monolith very kindly gifted it to me. Um, this is the Glaminatrix Barely Basic. So this is in my possession. And I can tell you that this would have tickled an itch whether I would have gotten this for free or not. So I'm super happy that they send it to me. I believe the code I have is still valid until today that the video goes live. So I'll make sure to put, put it in the description box and you can get 5% off your entire order. So yeah, this was, this is amazing. I think this is a great palette. It's very fall coated. It's got a lot of good neutrals, but then those like pops of like warmer toned, like oranges and like some like grungy green tones. The top two rows are all shimmer and they all have like a bit of a flip. And then we have three rows of matte. It's like, my Blend Bunny palette fantasy coming to life because this is very Blend Bunny coded with like the gradient going in every single row and then the matching shimmers to go with it. But this seems actually done in a way that I do really enjoy it. So Barely Basics by Glaminatrix, I'm really happy to already own. Fenty Beauty has a new powder formula, the Fenty Cheeks Suede Powder Blush, that purple, I want to try it, but I have to see this in store. Um, there are a couple, like Fenty also came out with a powder highlighter that looks really pretty, but every single time I go and try to pick it up, it's out of stock in my shade. So that's why I want to see what happens. Maybe if I find myself in a Sephora in the next couple of months and these are in stock, I can do some swatches to see if I like them but the purple is definitely, definitely on my radar. I love a good purple blush on me, so I think I might like it. So we don't often see a lot of these release, like releases being announced for K-beauty brands, but apparently Muse has a new limited edition Hello Kitty collection. Hello Kitty is super cute. Not really my thing. Amuse does some really, really good lip products. I also have one of their blushes, I believe, yeah. So they do some really solid picks for sure. Um, so yeah, Amuse is a solid brand, but I don't think I needed a 
Hello Kitty limited edition from them, but this is cute. And here I had to do a double take because I was like, Huda Beauty, what happened here? Didn't we already do this? This is Charlotte Tilbury. Let that sink in for a minute. Charlotte Tilbury is now doing nine pans. The Pillow Tog Love Eye Effect Palette. Um, yeah, it, it looks pretty, what can I say? Um, the packaging is the main selling point here. I really enjoy the lid uh, from what I can see in these pictures, but the color story is just warm tones with pinks. N not my vibe, not my vibe. And I didn't realize it, but apparently Dolly Parton is like the only celebrity without a makeup line. So she's launching a, a, a makeup line. And I think it's mainly lipsticks for now. Um, from what I can tell from these promo pictures, they are all lipstick shades. Um, and I think this makes sense for her. I think Dolly Parton is a celebrity who is known for her makeup looks. So it makes sense that she does it. I think the bejewelment of these Cases is also very Dolly Parton coded, so I think this is fun, good for her, but unless you're a huge Dolly Parton fan, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to be buying this. Chanel has some new cream blushes out. There seem to be five shades. No, there's more. There's a couple of shades. Oh, five shades, it seems. Yeah, and they're all warm toned. <laughs> There's one cooler toned, like reddish pink towards the bottom, but yeah, that's a bit of a shame. This is what we've seen a lot, right? That, you know, with all of these blush releases is that they do like six warm tones and then one very light cool tone pink for the fair skin people. And I'm like, really? Huda Beauty has a new foundation, the Easy Blur Foundation. It says that it's weightless, serum-like, ultra-blurring, smoothing, airbrushed, medium to buildable. Medium to buildable? Shouldn't that be medium to full buildable coverage? Oh, well. It says here medium to buildable. Uh, 29 shades with niacinamide and silica. So, some skincare properties here. Um, sounds really nice. I'm not someone who has tried a lot of Huda Beauty products outside of the eyeshadow because a lot of the products are very sort of influencer coded, if you know what I mean. So I feel that it's very much like that Instagram baddie sort of full beat and that's just not my vibe. So that's why I've always steered clear from Huda Beauty's like complexion ranges and like blushes and stuff like that because I always feel it's a bit too much. And from what I remember, Huda Beauty can also be pretty heavily fragranced. So I might check this out if I see it in store. We have Huda Beauty over here, so I can definitely check it out. But this is not a priority for me. Unearthly, um, Unearthly Cosmetics has a new like fall collection out. This is the Gargoy collection. It seems to come with some other products as well, but the palette looks really, really gorgeous. There are some warm tones at the top row, but the rest of it looks like these perfect, like cooler blues and greens. I think this looks really, really pretty. However, I think that I can dupe this out with some of my Nomad palettes. So for me, this doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't think I will be buying this one, but yeah, if I get sucked into this, I might, I might. So this is By Us Cosmetics. I saw this on Angelica Nukfist's page. I'm not, I don't know anything else about this brand. Um, this is very vibrant, very fun, colorful eyeshadow. Um, not really something that I need to try right now. Um, I think I'm good with when it comes to colorful palettes. When I did my palette ranking, I was surprised that I had to split my colorful ranking into two videos. One with like the grungier murky tones and one with the brighter things because I had so many. So I really don't need this. This is a palette from Gourmand Girls, the Gourmandizes, I think it's called. It's got like pastels and like some darker tones. I like the look of this. This this could very well make it into my shopping cart and become one of the first Gourmand Girls palettes that I try, because this is a brand I've never tried before. So I don't know anything about their quality or how good these are. I just think it looks nice. It definitely is a color story I can get down with. I'm not sure about the pastels though. I'm not a huge fan of pastel because I'm already so light. So then you might think, but Micah, it would make no, like for you, it would be make, like there would be no effort getting this to show up on you. 
but there's also something holding me back and I'm not a, I'm not fully sure why but I do think this is a pretty palette. This is one that has me do a double take for sure. Remember what I said about Christmas collections being announced? This is by NYX. This is their uh, holiday collection. Does it have a name? It just say it just says it's the NYX Christmas collection. So here's the Christmas collection from NYX. There seem to be some kits mainly and like a, um, a palette. So yeah, nice from NYX. Do I really need any like Christmas collection from NYX, not really, but I think this looks pretty. We have Nomad. They're coming out with a new palette. This is already out, I believe. Yeah, August 19th, so it's been out for a few weeks. This is the Art Artist's Autumn palette, and I think that this... There's definitely something about it that I like. It's got those, like, darker reds on the one end, and we've got some yellows, and we've got those blues and stuff. I think I like this. I like the look of it. Do I need it in my collection? No. That That's the thing with this. I think this is a beautiful palette. This is a great color story, but I don't need it in my life. Then we have more NYX because they also do a Beetlejuice collab. So if you want things to tie in with the new Beetlejuice movie, then NYX is the palette or has the products to go with that. I definitely like the look of that palette. That's some nice murky shades and very Beetlejuice inspired. I just wish we could get a new one from Melt. That, that's sort of what I'm hoping for, that we can get a Melt Beetlejuice bar too. That would be cool. And I think the thing a lot of people want me to talk about is this guy, the I Need a Warm from Natasha Denona. And I'm actually considering this. Again, like the Fenty Beauty stuff, I will find myself at Sephora in the next couple of months. I'm still going to Paris. I'm still going to Germany at some point before the end of the year. So I know I'll have access to this and will be able to see it physically before I decide to commit to buy. Um, Natasha Denona releases always take a couple of months before we actually get them in store. Like if a palette is announced, it's a, like available online in the US and then it doesn't come here yet. You might be able to buy this online, but I definitely want to like physically see it and swatch it because with Natasha Denona, the marketing images are never like what the actual palette looks like. That's just the way it is. Um, so I'm expecting this to look differently. The way it looks in the promo pictures, I'm like, yes, I have been loving some warm tones. This is a warm tone palette that I'm currently testing out. So I feel that this has a lot of like, if we need to go warm toned, then these are the kind of warm tones that I want to go for. There is a stunning multi-chrome in here as well and some really beautiful shimmers. So I may want this, but I don't really feel like I need it because I have plenty of warm tone palettes and not only that, I, I'm just expecting this to look different. So I'm I'm thinking it's probably going to look more orange in real life than it looks in these uh, pictures online where I feel it looks more neutral. So definitely on the maybe pile. Not totally decided yet, but this could be like my Black Friday treat yourself kind of moment um, where, you know, if I can find a discount. Sometimes I can find discounts for Cull Beauty where they sell these palettes and you can get like 25% off. That's how I bought my I Need a Nude and Xenon last year. And that was a game changer. Singe Beauty, the brand by Angelica Nukvist, has new blushes out. And I think it's good for the brand that they're expanding beyond brushes because so far Singe only had brushes. I have one because I needed to get free shipping on Monolith. So I was like, I'll just buy one of the eye brushes so I can give the brand a try because they are now on Monolith as well. Um, and yeah, these blushes look really stunning, but they're borderline orange, which if you know Angelica's preferences, she loves an orange blush. It's just not really my vibe. Like this is about as orange as I go with my blush. This is Heat Index from Hourglass, which is more like a coral. So no, this is really good for them, but not for me. MAC is coming out with a concealer to match the foundation they launched, I think, like a year ago. The Studio Radiance 24-Hour Luminous Lift Concealer. Um, again, a good move from MAC. I think that Studio Radiance foundation was 
pretty good, like hyped up and it got a lot, got a lot of attention. So for them to do more um, products in that range, I think is a really good move. And I don't know what it is, but Mac is like making a comeback. Like they were never gone to begin with because Mac is such a staple for so many people. But I definitely feel that in the beauty sphere, we've ignored Mac for too long. And we've forgotten how good and solid their line is and how few misses there are within the Mac range. They just do lovely things. And I think this is another killer product by the brand. So Maybelline is releasing a new lip tint kind of product. This is only out in Asia so far. And it's the Superstay Teddy Tint. Um, and I think it's very much like in line with what other like what k-beauty brands have already been doing for years which is this like blotted lip look um in a long lasting formula do you need to go maybelline for this no because you can very easily get this from a lot of k-beauty brands already because they do them left right and center so does it make sense for Maybelline to do it? Yes, Maybelline can do really good lipsticks. I think they are one of the drugstore brands that do some really solid lips, uh, lip colors. It's probably going to take ages for it to get here. So I'll check it out when we get it then, if we get it. And if we get it, we probably get a very limited shade range um, because that's usually the name of the game where I'm at. But yeah, this is, this is a really nice product. I would like to try one or two. There seem to be some lovely colors here. Sigma has a new collab with the Disney line. So they did a couple of other ones. I think they did Alice in Wonderland and Beauty and the Beast when those movies came out. And now they're doing Little Mermaid. And that makes sense for the brand. They've done these collabs before. Um, these are sometimes limited in where they are available. I was like slightly interested in that Alice palette at the time, but it was never released in Europe because of the licensing deal that they have with Disney on this. So it tends to be a US only thing and it doesn't even ship internationally for those licensing agreement deals that they have. Uh, so that may be something to uh, look into if you are interested in this. Um, but yeah, I think it makes sense. I think the shell compacts for the blush and the highlight is really cute. There seem to be some like lip products and some brushes. It's a solid little overview and I do think the palette goes with uh, Little Mermaid quite well. So this looks stunning. I think this is a good release from them. It makes sense with the movie. So yeah, nice. Remember what I said about Halloween collections? Wet n Wild has a Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas collab, which again makes a lot of sense. I think Tim Burton is quite hot and happening now with the Beetlejuice movie coming out. Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas has its fans and its loyal fans at that. So I think this makes sense. Do I need it in my life? No. Do I think it's cute? Yes. I think Nightmare Before Christmas? Yes, that's a solid movie. It's one of my favorites. So I love that one. Then Armani already came out with blushes in this format, but now they're doing liquid highlighters. This is the Luminous Silk Aqua Highlighter. Um, I've seen these blushes in store, at least testers, but all the shades were like sold out because everybody keeps buying them. Um, this, this looks nice. I mean, Armani has some really solid products. Again, because the brand is a little harder for me to find, I'm not super in tune. And then when I get to a counter that has the products, the cool stuff has sold out. But I have a couple of solid Armani products in my makeup collection. And again here, what they're doing really cleverly, the Luminous Silk Foundation is a classic. Everybody knows that name. So to continue that name in like other products like Charlotte Tilbury with the Pillow Talk or NARS with their orgasm like ranges, I think is really clever. Gucci has announced also a new highlighter, but this is a powder, but it is a powder gel and it comes in a compact. So that has me confused. Like, is it a powder or is it a gel? So this could be cream to powder or something like that, or like a powder that just feels really buttery smooth. There are some nice shades here, especially shade two, which is like this soft lavender that looks really pretty. Um, with Gucci, I have just like I, I can stand in front of their console in Sephora when I'm uh, when I'm when I happen to find it, swatch things and admire it. I have a couple of their lipsticks that I love, but it's not a brand that I have felt I need to try everything by, even though they do some really nice products. So. I'm going to be passing up on this myself, but this seems like a solid release for this brand because I don't think they were doing highlighters yet. 
Westman Atelier is coming out with a new concealer. This is again a brand I saw for the first time when I was in Paris last uh, summer. So in July I went there and I finally saw this brand and I was able to do some swatches. And I remember thinking like, yeah, this is a really, really nice brand, but it's very expensive for what it is, I find. So I know some people swear by luxury, but when I feel something like certain textures and I feel like, yeah, that just feels like K-Beauty stuff to me, which is a quarter of the price, I'm going to go with the K-Beauty stuff. So not sure how this concealer is going to go. I've never tried this brand, but I would definitely swatch as if I saw this in store. ABH is going back to their roots with a new brow product. This is the Volumizing Tinted Brow Gel. Um, yeah, did we new, need a new tinted brow gel? Maybe we didn't, but Anastasia, of course, started off as a brow brand, so it makes sense for them to do this. So yeah, I think that this is something they can add to the line, but ABH is one of those brands that I feel, they, they've just become really established, I think. They are not like the new exciting kid on the block anymore. This is something I found last night. This is the new Dinesa Myricks Light Work Palette. This is Light Work 6. And the look on that model, oh, I want that shade all over my eyes. It seems like there are some like duochromes and multichromes in this palette, as well as like regular shimmers. It is all shimmer though, which with an almost rainbow color story intrigues me. I, Danessa Myricks is one of those brands I really would like to try, but because I've never been able to find them in store, I'm very hesitant because I don't know where to start. Um, this could be something that I could try, but it's $128. Uh, dollars. And then I'm like, $128 for colorful eyeshadow. Like, I've got plenty of eyeshadow. I don't need this in my life. So that's another reason why I'm like, Want to love it, want to try the brand for sure, but just don't really know how to get a foot in the door, you could say. Hourglass has announced that they're coming out with some new palettes. They do three of these every single year. They seem to market them towards different skin tones, but I'm not exactly sure that's the case. That light one on the one end is really nice. I also like the packaging. I think it's like a dragon or dragon inspired anyways. That one looks nice, but I have the Hourglass power powders like individually in my collection already so i know this doesn't make sense for me to own but these do look really pretty i always eye these up every single year and every year i'm like you shouldn't do it and then i don't i'm a good girl too faced has announced the first part of their holiday collection usually the too faced line is pretty extensive around the holidays so here we get like a face palette some eyeshadow palettes and there seem to be some lip products as well um, the eyeshadow palettes, like nothing here screams Christmas to me. Nothing here screams Too Faced to me. Um, and it also looks a little cheap. Yes, I, I'm just going to be very sassy and call it like it is. Um, th this is not good. Th this is, I'm not going to put my money towards this. That's just how I feel. So moving on to the next thing. So this is a brand that is apparently stocked on Monolith and Monolith has announced that they're hoping to get it before their next launch, which is the 15th of September. Um, and this is by Shell We. Is that true? Where did I see that? Yeah, this is by Shell We and it's the Somber palette. Really nice cooler tone purples with some interesting shimmers inside it. This looks really, really stunning. Um, yeah. If this indeed comes to Monolith, I might pick it up. I might. I might. And finally, Essence and Catrice have already launched their new products over here. They're going to be trickling their way into stores and different territories in the next couple of weeks and months. I was able to find them only on Boozy Shop this time around. I couldn't even find them on Cosmetic for Less, so I don't know what's going on there. But Essence is also already announcing some, like fall, winter, Christmas releases. So um, an advent calendar is what they're coming out with. And apparently these are the contents of that advent calendar. So that's also new from Essence. Essence and Catrice are doing a lot of like limited editions throughout the year as well, but I just got the new stuff in. So I'm good for my Essence and Catrice fix for some time to come. 
And those are all of the new releases that I wanted to talk to you about today. So thank you so very much for joining me. Thumbs up this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more by me. I'll be posting four times a week on this channel, once a week on my second channel, and I post daily over on the blog. So I hope to catch you in one of those places, and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.